What's going on guys? So this is a step by step guide on what I would suggest doing to go from knowing pretty much nothing to being a self taught software developer. Now I want to stress that there's no magical path to success. These are just some basic steps that I would suggest and I'm not going to just ramble them off. I don't think that's of much help. I'm going to elaborate and talk about each one and hopefully it can help some people find their path to successfully becoming a software developer of any kind. So the first step is to find your end goal. And what I mean by that is where do you what do you see yourself doing and what do you want to do? Do you want to work for a large company? Do you want to work for a startup? Do you want to freelance and run your own business? Or maybe you just want to create software to license out and sell. There's a lot of things you can do. So figure out which one of them you can really see yourself doing and and what you would like to do. Um, some people like the security and benefits of working for a company and some people like the freedom to build something of their own and freelance or start their own business. Also, there's many different paths in programming and technology. What do you want to do as far as as coding? Do you want to do web development, game development, data science? There's a lot of different paths to take. Um, I would encourage you to, to really look at what you're naturally good at. For instance, if you're really good with math, you might want to look into data science or possibly some low level programming. If you're more visual, then you might want to go into web development or mobile development or desktop applications, stuff like that. Um, if you're interested in, in knowing the pay scales and, and job security for different positions, Glassdoor is a great website. There's a lot of different websites that you can look at stuff like that because I'm sure that will play a factor in what you choose for your end goal. So once you choose what you want to do, work for a company, freelance, whatever it might be, you need to choose a programming language. It's definitely the first thing that you want to learn and different jobs, different types of, of programmers use different languages. For instance, if you're going into data science, machine learning, AI, anything like that, you're you're going to learn Python most likely for mobile development. You'll probably learn Swift or Java game dev, maybe C++, web development. Of course, you need to know HTML and CSS, which aren't actually programming languages, but they're the basically the building blocks of the web and usually the first thing you learn and then you move to like JavaScript or PHP or Python or almost any uh, any language as far as server side development goes. So you will have to do some research on that. Now, a big mistake that I see people do is jump right into frameworks and libraries and stuff. I would definitely recommend learning the fundamentals of a language first. Learn some some computer science fundamentals and principles before you go on and, and learn frameworks and stuff, because you're just going to overwhelm yourself if you try to learn multiple things at once. Uh, you'll also need to pick a text editor or an IDE. I use Visual Studio Code for just about everything, but I'm a web developer. If you're using a compiled language like, let's say, Java, you're probably going to want to use some kind of IDE, some kind of um, integrated development environment. And another thing to mention is you, you, once you pick a language, you're not stuck with it. If you find that you want to do something else, you can switch. If you know the basics, and the fundamentals of just programming, then you can you can pick up languages really quickly and you can learn multiple languages. Okay, now in order to learn a programming language and learn other technologies, you need to find resources and kind of build your own curriculum, which can be kind of difficult when you go to college or you pay for a boot camp. Everything is laid out for you. But when you are self taught, you have to find your own resources. So I'm just going to quickly go over some of these. So books, believe it or not, are one of the best resources for learning fundamentals of programming languages. In my opinion, they suck for things like frameworks and libraries because those are updated so often and pretty much all the books I've ever looked at on frameworks are out of date, but they are really good for programming languages and they even give you the history and and uh, computer science principles and things like that. So they are good for that stuff. Documentation is one of the best resources for just about any technology. However, documentation is more for reference than a linear way to learn something. So it's usually used as kind of a supplement to a more linear course. You also have free resource websites like MDN, W3 Schools. These are great sites for beginners. W3 Schools has everything from HTML to Python to SQL, and it really helped me out back when I was learning uh, web development. So video is definitely my preference. It's also what I do. Uh, it can be difficult to find up to date courses. 
So you do have to do a little bit of digging, but the good news is just like with books, if you're learning a programming language, they don't update often. For instance, my JavaScript course is about two years old and it's just as relevant now as it was then. So as far as options, you have a ton. I mean, YouTube, of course, which is free and great for like shorter videos and fundamentals, small projects. But you probably want to get into some longer form content as well. You have Udemy where you can go through and pick different courses of, of all types, all different topics for like 10 bucks a piece. Um, and then you have membership sites like Pluralsight, lynda.com, uh, front end masters. There's just a ton of them out there where you pay 20 to $40 a month and you get access to all types of great courses. Now, in addition to that, you have some options where they, it's pretty much like an online boot camp that where they lay things out for you. They lay out a curriculum. So, so sites like free code camp, which is great. I know a ton of people that have gone through it and learned a lot, uh, code Academy, which I be also believe is free. You have paid programs like team Treehouse and udacity that have these kind of online degree programs and you go through, you know, different, um, different technologies and, and learn different things kind of like a boot camp so definitely something to check out especially if you're not really good at making your own curriculum and you need that laid out for you so in addition to these you have uh, challenge websites like code wars where you can solve algorithms and things like that and you can use multiple languages so something to look at after you already learn the fundamentals this will also kind of prepare you for job interview questions and things like that so there's a lot of different ways to learn online. You just have to kind of find what works for you and f find online instructors that you click with. If it's not me, you know, look at other instructors like Steven Grinder, Colt Steele, Maximilian, um, Kent Dodds, West Boss. There's just so many talented online instructors that, in my opinion, are better than a lot of um, like college professors. So you can find some really good teachers online. So this next one is often overlooked in self-taught development. Having a community of peers to learn from and bounce ideas off of is very beneficial. And if you can find a mentor, that's awesome. But most developers are very busy and, and or can be very expensive. So that's kind of hard to do. Uh, the easiest way to start talking with other developers is in online communities. Of course, you have forums and, and different websites, but a better option is to find some kind of discord or server or or a Slack channel where you can interact and communicate with other developers. The developer hangout is a discord server I created a while ago. I, I, I kind of just handed it off to the community, but it's still up and running and um, you know, you can get help with just about any language framework or anything like that. And there's a lot of coding discords and slacks out there that you can join and um, start talking to other developers online. I would also suggest finding people in real life to work with and talk to. Meetups are a great way to do that. Um, there's something about interacting with with other developers that you can't get from just sitting on your computer by yourself. I've worked on my own now for about five years or so, but the one thing I really miss about working for a company and, and actually working with other people every day is having people to bounce ideas off of and the, the ability to get immediate help with something if I need it. Um, so, you know, find some kind of online or in real life community that you can join um, even if it's just one or two other developers that you can talk to or email and you know doing this isn't just for learning you're also networking at the same time you're meeting people in the industry and you never know where it might take you so don't be too antisocial. So number five is create your own projects. At this point, you should have a good arsenal of resources that you're familiar with and you should be should have taken some courses, whether it's Udemy or Free Code Camp or books, whatever it might be. And now it's time to create your own projects. Um, following along with courses is only half the battle when it comes to learning. You, you also learn a ton from doing things on your own and veering away from courses and tutorials and having to debug and, and search for answers and stuff like that. And I think this is the part where a lot of people get stuck and many people even quit. They feel good, you know, when they're learning and taking a course and feeling like they're actually getting something out of it. But then when they go to create their own project, their mind just kind of goes blank and they stare at a blank text editor. So one thing I would stress is that for your first few projects, 
uh, or any project for that matter, you don't have to start from scratch. You can take one of the course projects and use everything that you learned and apply it to something new. You know, you, you, you may have done a project like, let's say, my real estate application in my Django course, which actually needs updating. But just to use it as an example, you could take that real estate website and change all the database tables, the views, the models, etc., and turn it into an employment agency website where you have companies and employees instead of homes and agents. So give it a different design, start changing things, um, and it will feel more like your own project. And then I guarantee you, you're going to start getting different ideas and different features to add on to the project. And then you can use documentation and, and other supplemental resources to, to figure out how to add on what you want to do, how to add on those features. And slowly you'll be taking, you'll be taken out of tutorial hell and you'll be building stuff on your own. So, um, you know, you use projects as a reference, use other people's code as a reference, go on GitHub, find projects that are similar to what you're doing that are using the same technologies and get some ideas. Don't copy it, but, you know, get some ideas from it and build on that. Okay, so once you have a good amount of projects under your belt, you want to create a nice portfolio that's attractive and modern, but also really simple to navigate. So have a website where you can showcase your work. If it's web development you're doing, have a live version of the project hosted somewhere so that employers or clients can check it out. Uh, if you're doing like I don't know, desktop tools or mobile apps or something like that, be sure to just have a link to the code and maybe an executable or, or something that they can use to, to actually see your work. Um, and, and again, this goes for people that want to be freelancers or if you want to get a job at a company. It's twice as important if you don't have a degree because if you don't have a degree, you need to have solid proof and examples that you know what you're doing. Um, and having a, a portfolio with some really nice projects, in my opinion, is the best way to do that without having that piece of paper. So, I mean, I would definitely suggest working hard on your, your portfolio as well as your, your projects. So the next step or the next tip is to contribute to open source. And this is something that I mean, it's not mandatory, but it's something I would suggest looking into. Go on GitHub, find something that interests you, that you have some knowledge about and check out the issues. See if you can improve on something, add a new feature. This will give you some real life experience with a real project. And it'll also give you a little experience collaborating with other developers. And I mean, there's videos out there that explain exactly how to contribute to open source uh, or open source projects. There's articles and stuff like that. I actually plan on making one of these videos in the future where we go and find a, uh, an open source project and fix a bug or add a feature or something like that. But doing this will, will give you something else that you can put on your resume as well. So it is a good idea. All right, so another thing that is really important that I don't think is stressed enough is your online presence. So make sure you have an up-to-date LinkedIn profile with a link to your website, have some kind of branding and logo, keep your GitHub up-to-date with any projects that you've done. Um, you might want to create a professional Twitter account. The more visible online you are, the better. Hell, if you can create YouTube tutorials, do that. I mean, I don't have any kind of degree, but I've been offered jobs by every large company you can think of, all because of my online presence and my online content. And this is really, really important, again, for, for self-taught developers without degrees, because it shows that you know what you're doing. It shows that you're you're passionate, you, you're motivated. You know, if you're tweeting about code all the time, it shows that you're really interested in it. Um, so, you know, anything you can do, write articles for your blog or for Medium or a site like that, it just shows employers and clients that, um, that, that you're really motivated and, and you know what you're doing. All right, so the last step is to prepare and apply for jobs. So at this point, you should have all the other boxes checked. You should know your end goal, what you want to specialize in, know at least one programming language proficiently and most likely a framework, 
have resources and a community that you can go to if you need help, as well as having some projects under your belt with a nice portfolio and hopefully some kind of online presence. Once you have all this, you've pretty much done everything you can to set yourself up to get a job or if you want to freelance, start getting clients. If you're looking to get a job with a large company, be sure to practice things like algorithms and whiteboard questions. The interview process can be pretty brutal, so um, do some reading up on interview prep. There's actually full courses dedicated to this. Um, look for jobs in your area that are looking for things that you know. So if you know Python, apply to every job that is looking for people that know Python. Uh, I actually have a Medium article with over 70 websites to find jobs of all types. So I'll try to remember to put that link in the description. Um, and many times job postings will put like a minimum requirement of a bachelor's or something like that. And as a self-taught developer, I know how depressing that that can be. But just because it says that doesn't mean you shouldn't apply. This is why your, your work and your portfolio are so important, because if you can prove that you can do the job and you have the experience, many companies will overlook that degree and that, you know, overlook that piece of paper. Not all, but but some companies will if they can if you can prove yourself. Um, when it comes to finding a job, don't sell yourself short. However, you, you can't be too picky because you don't really have that experience yet. Remember, your first job isn't going to be your last, most likely, unless it's a really good job. Your salary might not be exceptional, but it's, it's not going to stay that way either. The biggest thing is just getting that position or getting that client under your belt, and you can add that to your resume for when you want to apply to your next job or your next gig. All right, so those are nine steps to becoming a self-taught software developer. Obviously, everyone's path is different, but I think it's a good foundation or, or a good map to follow, a good guide to follow. Remember, nothing comes easy. You really have to put in a lot of hard work to become successful, not just in software development, but anything in life. So just pace yourself and, and try to keep a positive outlook on what you're doing. I know programming can be very, very frustrating at times, but if you stick with it and it's truly what you want to do, I think you'll be just fine. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you out and I'll see you in the next video.